I am delighted to be joined by Lucas Dirks this morning. Thank you so much, Lucas, for taking time out to um, to just talk to us, uh, talk to me a bit about uh, your presentation, your masterclass, um, which is taking place next year. So your the title of your presentation is Can Mental Spatial Diagnosis Be a Conceptual Bridge? Which is kind of for me a mind blowing a mind blowing title. So do please start by telling us a little bit more about yourself and your masterclass. Yeah. So the thing is that I have been doing NLP for a long time, and then started to do the social panorama, and just from that came uh, the idea that we could use the same thing as we used in the social panorama, but then more extended for diagnosing mental issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you want to see it logical, you could say that that uh, the idea that uh, came from doing social panorama for 25 years was, okay, everything that's going on in the mind goes on somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, as NLPers, we were very familiar with that, but it was never so well pronounced. Uh, so it was implicitly when we set a goal for a person, we put the goal somewhere in space. No, nah, that was just logical, or we made a timeline or something. But then when you started to look at this uh, spatial aspect, uh, then you saw, oh, it's all over the place. Uh, so space is all over the place. And um, what if we prioritize that? Mm -hmm. And then when I started to do that with some colleagues, then uh, after several years, it became clear that, in fact, implicitly, we were diagnosing issues on where people experience something, in their mental space uh, and uh, we did some experiments with that and uh, well, the best uh, thing was about uh, uh, depression because uh, it happened that depressions were uh, not tangible things in people's mental space so uh, uh, we learned as NLPs that uh, depression is a process so it comes and goes uh, so but um, <clears throat> in looked at, at it this in this way you could say no, it's a, a thing, <laughs> a thing in space, and the thing mm. needs to go away. So that was, in the beginning, a little bit in conflict with our uh, Adelpeer's uh, ideology. But then uh, when we just uh, continued that, then um, it uh, led to the general idea that uh, a spatial diagnosis could be very practical. And you could say the other thing, the, the regular way of diagnosing is uh, based on the symptoms. Uh, mm -hmm. With the DSM-5, you look at the list of symptoms, and when a person has these symptoms, you say, okay, now you are depressed or you have depression, and you uh, write the recipe for the first trial on the antidepressive drug. <laughs> so that, that's, that tends to go like that. But when you look at it in space, you have a more a monitor where you know, okay, the depression is here or, or there or wherever it is, and and it needs to be gone uh, when uh, when the therapy is effective, mm. and and the same holds for having a nasty um, mother-in-law here or when she's still there at the end of the session. Yeah, you did not reach your goal yet. She needs to go somewhere else in mm -hmm. your mental space. Now, so these are the ideas uh, that I like to talk about in my workshop. And I think that's uh, uh, also very good to, to make sure that everybody understands it is based on working with NLP. And in NLP, we uh, did not uh, like diagnosis so much. And most NLPers, they, they think that this is something that you should not do or uh, you don't need to know anything about it. But it's... Um, it's still interesting that from working with NLP came a sort of alternative view on that. And uh, I would love the, the participants to go home with that view and, and that when they are uh, talking to somebody uh, about the subject of how to know what is the issue with a person, mm. that they can use that. That's, mm. that's my idea. Absolutely, because if, if that, and, and it sounds from what you've been describing, but but that if there is something that's out there spatially, that could still potentially be stopping someone's progress towards what, as like you said, towards their goal, towards whatever it is. And and if if a, an NLP professional is sitting there, kind of a bit, I'm not quite sure what the what the barrier is. 
this is another option for what the barrier could be to someone's progress. Right, right. Uh, as you say, that a lot of uh, uh, problems people do have in going forward in life are because they have in their mental space something that blocks them from seeing the future or from moving there. And, and this is not new because in many NLP techniques and uh, in the work of uh, John Grinder and the like, and, uh, and so there were always things that had this in it, but then uh, it was not so explicit. And so I like to be, make it more explicit yes. so that you can see what you are doing on this level or, or, or on this uh, dimension or in the medium of space. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, what is fresh, innovative or new that delegates could take away from your session? Yeah, well, to the people, of course, who already are familiar with this, there's nothing new. But I think that uh, I, I meet a lot of uh, NLPers and also very experienced NLPers. And I think to them, it adds something that uh, empowers their work. Because when you have this look, you become more sure what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. So and and then you have your tools and you know uh, what tool maybe to use. Uh, it can be any tool from NLP. There are special tools, of course, that develop from working with space, uh, so that you start to um, specifically move ideas that stand in the way and see what comes up when I try to move this with the client uh, and the client uh, protests against that or, or has uh, beliefs coming up that are uh, against that or they remember uh, traumatic experiences that, that they get involved with. And so it helps also to um, yeah, structure your work because when you work on the basis of uh, space and spatial, spatial diagnosis, uh, you just can follow that in a tote type of mm. Uh, mm. process. And then, uh, yeah, there are things that you know where things need to go, but some things are, of course, uh, uh, very personal, so that, that you need to find out as your client what could be the ideal place for this issue to move mm. towards or, or where should it uh, go to be dissolved or whatever. Mm. But some things you, you have... Uh, examples in the back of your mind that you can start off with, which speeds off the work a lot. Uh, so, for instance, now something that you mentioned that when something is in your face, blocking, mm -hmm. and then of course the logic list, and now try what see what happens when you move it away, uh, what mm -hmm. happens when you move it downward and and to the left, for instance, and then the client will notice, uh, or does need to even even not need to be. Uh, a psychology or psychotherapy client, uh, but it can be anybody because when you are stuck with something and you look at it from this perspective, uh, then the conclusion will always be that something is in the wrong place mm. and you need to find out where to move it. Absolutely. Thank you. So what top tip would you give to delegates uh, that, uh, who are planning on attending your masterclass? Yeah, so, well, I think there's uh, literature that you, of course, can look at. Mm -hmm. So um, so my <clears throat> my Soj Panorama book, Soj Panoramas, mm -hmm. so that uh, that's uh, a very good introduction or even more because it's very practical. Yeah. Then I think also the work of James Lawley. Uh, so we agree on these things a lot. And uh, so that's, uh, I think we have helped each other to uh, see it in a certain way. Maybe he helped me more than I helped him. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> but at least that was a fruitful connection, and uh, and so when you um, look at uh, his articles or books, uh, mm -hmm. so that could be inspiring, and I think he uh, he will also be active somewhere, maybe in the conference. I don't know, but or something. He, he was he was our, him and Penny were our masterclass speakers last year. So, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so you could look at that when you still can look at that somewhere. Uh, and there, I think there's many things. And then also the work of Connie Ray yes. and the bonus process because that is fully spatial. Uh, so And that adds added an, another dimension to the idea of mental space because sometimes it's 
it's going out so far what you do and and uh yeah understanding that uh the principles behind that was also a big challenge for me and uh, i'm still working on that but it's uh <laughs> yeah that's a great lifelong uh, learning yeah but i think that the so the the idea that NLP was ready and that there was nothing to develop, I think we need to abandon that and then think, okay, we can be loyal to the founders, but still there's a way ahead. <laughs> always, always. There's yeah. always new applications and, and new ways of taking things forward. So absolutely. So Lucas, what inspired you to want to present one of the masterclasses? Sorry, can you repeat it? What is a good... What, what inspired you to want to present one of the masterclasses? Oh, well, I... I well, it's also that I felt thankful of uh, receiving your award uh, many years ago. So I thought, uh, well, it would be good to do something back again. And I... Uh, uh, yeah, well, also, the other thing is that I uh, want to spread this idea, these ideas. And so that's my mission in life. So I, uh, when there's an opportunity and I have the time and the energy, I say yes. And so I try to do something. Brilliant. And we're very much looking forward to you presenting uh, next year. So it's uh, yeah, 2025 you are presenting on Tuesday, the 10th of June. Uh, and you're starting your three hour presentation at uh, 1700 hours, which will be 1700 hours BST. So Assuming you're going to be somewhere in Europe, it'll be 1800 hours for you. Um, so thank you so much, Lucas, for, um, for taking time to chat to us today. Very much appreciate it and very much looking forward to your masterclass in June. Okay, thank you, Karen.